with the end of the international break approaching, there has been a lot of chatter around Manchester United's upcoming schedule, and we need to speak about it. So business is about to pick up, ladies and gentlemen, and it will for us, hopefully, if you hit that like button on your way in and subscribe if you're new. From the Southampton game up until Aston Villa on October 6th, uh, I believe the next international break will commence after that. United will be averaging a game every just over three and a half days. Fixtures in the League Cup third round against Barnsley. Europa League phase uh, beginning with match days against FC Twente and Porto. Tottenham and Brentford all to come too. We've all been wary of injuries piling up at the club. That was a massive component to our inconsistencies last season. Not the only one, but a massive one. We have started this campaign in a negative way. When you look at the injuries to Lenny Yolo, Rasmus Hoyland in pre-season, Luke Shaw and Mason Mount injured, members that you would deem crucial to the first team setup, missing out in the infant stages of what has developed to being an important season for a multitude of reasons. We did know before that Shaw and Hoyland were projected to return soon after this first international break. Terrell Malassia was seen in individual training clips the last time I checked, but everything regarding his knee problems and surgery that took place has been rather vague, which I'm not going to lie, at times has worried me and it has worried me. As if things are being hidden, but that's just speculation on my part. What we can question, however, is what version of Malassia we could get upon his return and how much that year out stunted potential growth. These unfortunate things happen in sports sometimes another reason why i wanted to make uh, this video is because of the subject of fixture congestion because recently we've seen numerous players around the footballing world speak on the unreasonable pressures that today's calendar puts on elite athletes and on social media often these comments are greeted by ignorant people addressing human issues as if they don't apply to footballers because their access i guess to things such as recovery maintenance and so forth is greater than the average person obviously finances are a big part of that conversation that is completely missing the point however because i have conversations with people around me i'm sure you do too family is one thing and, and very important at that but the current generations of athletes are almost on catch up all the time much like these governing bodies have been in an attempt to normalize the scheduling of major tournaments like the euros the world cup i can go on and on it seems as if to me the pandemic only accelerated plans to radically change the sport in a way that doesn't favor or value the very people who are responsible for the continued growth of the product instead they're being extorted and taken advantage of to maximize the revenues which always has its positives and major negatives when in the hands of power hungry leaders at the top of the food chain i would love to see um in a few years time if there will be studies made on the average length of a footballer's career if this trajectory continues because i'd only imagine it shortening the enthusiasm for the game dwindling modern day athletes are smarter than ever in regard to being in tune with their bodies and understanding how to maximize the careers they can carve out for themselves in more ways than one. On plenty of occasions, we've seen examples of young talents emerging as exuberant souls, soon to be burnt to smithereens due to unreasonable demands. Like I said before, I just don't believe these things are spoken about enough and per usual in sports, real conversations about the welfare and future of athletes seem to go through one ear and out the other. Back to United once more as I round out this video. All of the things I've spoken about regarding scheduling and so forth I feel are valid not just for the club I support but all across the board. The dreaded Christmas period to me doesn't even seem as significant anymore because when you factor in all of the tournaments and fixtures that top I guess six to eight sides have you end up playing every few days and that leaves very little time that Eric Ten Hag in particular is needing for new players to slowly adapt into his setup. Most likely the team will need Manuel Ogarte to step into his role and I know we spoke about him still needing a grace period in the previous video, I still believe so. 
that doesn't mean he won't have a role in upcoming fixtures, however. And as always, we'll be hoping for injury prevention for those who are fit and available right now. Key figures like this, Sandro Martinez, who hasn't had the ideal start to a campaign after three games, but that can change. And a few other names, sorry about that, of course. Uh, quite frankly, I don't believe we can afford an additional name on the medical bed at all. I don't think any band wants that for any of their teams in the Premier League. It will be interesting to see how we navigate through this period, considering the significance of going on a good run versus how realistic that actually is. We seem to be back in that headspace of cautious approaches and maybe for the best. Ultimately, approaching with caution will only worsen the situation if performances follow that mantra too. So let me know what you all thought of this video 22s. Cappy will be back with me after the Southampton game to speak about what went down. Hopefully back to winning ways. We shall see. Look out for the vibe check, actually. We're due to film a little later to preview the game. But yeah, what are your thoughts on Manchester United's upcoming schedule? The continued inflation of matches per year in the footballing calendar and more. Let's start a conversation in the comment section. For now, hit that like button. Subscribe if you're new. Share to your friends and frenemies. And until the next time, I'll see you lots in a bit.